Okay, so hi, my name is Bex Caswell Olson, and I am the Director of Book Conservation here at the Northeast Document Conservation Center, or NEDCC. And um, in this video, I'm going to talk about how to interleave a bound volume. So the first question I want to answer today is, why should interleaving be added? And the question and the answer is because interleaving can protect pages against certain types of damage, including abrasions, offsetting of friable media, adhesives, staining caused by acidic or chemically unstable media, and more. Um, but a quick word of caution is that too much interleaving can put stress on bindings and it can also impede proper storage and handling. Therefore, it may not always be practical or possible to inter interleave every page of a bound volume, and in some cases you might find it necessary to prioritize based on the potential for future damage. And we'll delve into that a bit more in, the, in a minute. But so knowing that interleaving can protect against certain types of damage, when should interleaving be added? Um, I'd love to share some examples with you guys. So interleaving, I would consider interleaving under some of the following circumstances. One, when pages contain acidic or chemically unstable materials, which are causing staining. You can clearly see this in the example here on the right, where the acidic newsprint clippings have stained the facing page pretty severely. And if there had been interleaving there, that could have mitigated that. Another situation when I would want to think about add, adding interleaving is when you have friable media like pastels, charcoal, or other types of pigments which are flaking or offsetting and rubbing off onto the facing page, like you can see in this example. I'd also consider adding interleaving when pages contain fasteners, such as staples, pins, photo corners, paper clips, or any other type, other raised attachments like botanical specimens, textiles, even small objects, which can abrade or catch on the facing page. And these are all things that I very typically see both in photo albums and in scrapbooks. I'd also wanna add interleaving when photographic prints are facing one, each, one another, um, like, like in this album here, because photographs will scratch each other and those tiny abrasions can lead to changes or losses in the image area over time. And you can, hopefully you can see in the example of this image where I've kind of blown up, zoomed in on that there's a pretty clear line of abrasion that's been caused by the top edge of the photograph on the facing page. Another really maybe more obvious example the problem in this example is that the dark areas of the photographs have caused staining on the facing page, which is left like a ghost image, both on the support leaves and in the photographs. So interleaving would be really helpful here. And the last but not least example I'm going to give today is um, I would want to add interleaving or think about it when I have pages that contain adhesives, which are sticky, oozing, or causing staining. And these are, again, all really common problems that I see often in scrapbooks. Um, in addition to staining, you might find that the adhesive used on pressure sensitive tape, for instance, spreads outwards as it ages. That's called adhesive creep. And that's what I mean when I say by oozing adhesives. Um, rubber cement can also be really problematic because it can remain kind of sticky even over time. And it can also cause really dark, terrible stains. Um, and then there are some types of scrapbooks, like the example shown on the far right there, where the pages were actually manufactured with adhesive dots that just had to be moistened to be sticky, and then you could glue down whatever clipping you wanted. Um, unfortunately, in, in, in humid conditions or if those materials get wet, those adhesive dots do become sticky again, and so that can be a real problem. Okay, so once we've established that interleaving is necessary and you want to add some to a bound volume, you want to think about what type of paper to use. So I'm often asked what the best paper for interleaving is, and I have bad news that there is no one-size-fits-all solution. The type and weight of paper is going to depend on numerous factors, including what type of media is present, how many pages you need to interleave, the quality of the support leaves or the pages of the book, and how much added thickness the binding can accommodate. However, there are some things that I have some tips for you. So I do recommend that all interleaving paper should be acid-free or pH neutral and lignin-free. Paper that is buffered to a pH of eight and a half to nine is recommended for most paper-based materials with some caveats. So you would want to use unbuffered or pH neutral paper for materials that are pH sensitive. And that could include things like color photographs, cyanotypes, which are known as blueprints, diazotypes, also known as white prints, silk, 
wool, and you know there are probably a variety of other pH sensitive things that I'm not mentioning. Um, Microchamber interleaving paper is available in different weights and sizes, and it's really great. It contains zeolites that will absorb pollutants created by off-gassing. So it's really useful when you have very acidic materials like newspaper clippings. Um, it's also very effective at, at absorbing odors, and so it can be used to kind of help mitigate odors. Maybe you have something that came from the home of a smoker or has a musty odor. It can really help with that. Um, if you're interleaving photographic prints, um, again, keep in mind that some of them are pH sensitive, but you also want to make sure that you're using papers that have passed PAT or the photographic activity test. I would also recommend if you're um, using papers that are labeled as silver safe, if you are working with developed out black and white prints or black and white gelatin prints. I also want to just mention quickly something I don't recommend, which is glassine. So glassine papers, which I know were you know, used historically, and they're very popular because they're thin and cheap. However, they are acidic and therefore they're not suitable for long-term storage and please don't use them. So as I just mentioned, there's lots of different types of paper and you know, options there. And so in addition to choosing the correct type of paper, you also wanna make sure you're using the right weight of paper. So I would consider using a heavier paper when I'm interleaving oversized volumes or when I'm interleaving brittle pages that maybe need a little bit more support behind them. However, I'd wanna avoid using a heavy paper if I have a lot of pages that I need to interleave because I don't wanna distort or stress the binding because that can lead to additional damage. Um, I would consider using a thinner paper when I'm interleaving small or thin volumes or when adding too much bulk to the binding is a concern. However, I'd want to avoid a thinner paper when I'm working with a larger volume because thinner papers are going to be too flimsy and they're more likely to cockle and crease and just make handling awkward. Um, so those are some things I'm going to consider. Before I show you how to interleave a bound volume, I want to talk about a couple things that I would like not to see. Um, and there, there's some mistakes that I see quite often, so I'm just going to go over those. So the first mistake is adding too much interleaving. Like I've mentioned a couple times already, this can distort the binding and you know make it kind of like a weird wedge shape. This puts a lot of stress on the joints and the inner hinges, which can cause those to fail over time. Um, and I'm gonna point to that quickly. So that would be this area here, um, specifically right where the board is connected to the spine. Um, and failure of those areas would mean that they break and eventually lead to the cover separating from the volume. Another issue is that when the covers are kind of splayed open like this, they can't lay flat. And so they're likely to become warped over time. Just gravity will do its thing. And lastly, wedge-shaped books are more difficult to handle and they're very difficult to shelve properly. And that can lead to accidental damage. Um, because we really want to avoid distorting or damaging the binding when we're adding interleaving, like I said before, it may not always be practical or possible to interleave every single page, even if you feel that doing so would be beneficial. And so in some cases, you're just going to need to prioritize which pages are interleaved based on the potential for future damage. So the second mistake that I see is people using paper that is too thick for that particular volume, because paper that's too heavy can add too much bulk, like we just talked about. So in the example shown here, I've taken the same book, which is a, a little a, a notebook that someone had repurposed as a scrapbook. So there's lots of different things adhered in there. Um, and I interleave the same book with 20 sheets of two different thicknesses of paper, a thinner paper and a heavier paper. And as you can see in this instance, the thin paper was a better choice because it caused only minimal distortion to the binding, whereas with the heavy paper, it's really quite wedge shaped and awkward. So I just wanted to show that the same amount of interleaving when you're using different weights can really make a difference. So the weight, the weight of paper is something to really think about. Um, the third mistake is kind of is the opposite is using paper that's too thin because that can be really awkward to handle, especially in larger volumes. Thinner papers are also just more likely to get creased and cockled as you're, you're turning the page, the kind of you know air gets underneath there and they get creased as you're turning the page. They can also get misaligned during use and kind of stick out the edges and it, it's very sloppy. 
Um, and it just makes handling awkward and again, can lead to accidental damage through improper handling. And also, man, it just looks so bad. Uh, next mistake is using the wrong size of paper, which is something we haven't talked about yet. This is something, again, that I see a lot. Perhaps either it's an effort to save paper or maybe someone is just trying to use whatever they have on hand, but the interleaving will be too small. Maybe it's cut to the size of the image rather than the whole page, like the example on the left there. And that's not correct. So interleaving that's too small is going to shift out of place within the volume as, as it's being used or maybe even in storage because, again, gravity will just kind of pull those smaller pieces down. Um, whereas interleaving that's too large, like in the example on the right, is going to protrude from the volume at the edges, which is going to make it difficult to handle and make storage difficult. Um, and so we want to make sure that the interleaving is the right size. And for me, the right size is just a hair smaller than the overall page size. Okay, so now that I've kind of talked to you about all the things that I'm going to think about when I'm choosing interleaving and what not to do, let's, let's talk about how to interleave a bound volume. And so hopefully some of this is kind of review. So first I wanna choose the type of paper, whether that's buffered or unbuffered or microchamber paper. And I'm gonna choose that based on the type of materials that I'm interleaving. Next, I wanna choose the weight of paper, and that's gonna be based on different factors, including the size of the volume and how much added bulk it can, can accommodate. Third, I wanna make sure that the interleaving is cut to size, which again, it should be maybe slightly smaller than the overall page size. And then the last thing I want to mention is making sure that your interleaving is, you know, properly aligned. It should be contained within the volume and it should not be sticking out at the head or the tail or the fore edge. And there you have it. That's how to interleave a bound volume. Um, if you want more information about best practices for interleaving and storage of bound materials, as well as photographic materials, I have some resources listed here. Um, I also here have contact information for NEDCC, so if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us. And hopefully you found this video helpful, and if so, please like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more content like this. All right, I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording. And...